Hey, I'm probably a bit too busy to answer the phone now, so just call back later when you can. Right, so that didn't work, he didn't answer his phone. But anyway, hopefully he sees his story time and he will see all the tea I'm about to spill in this video. You can do it once, twice, five times, it doesn't matter. You are an, you are a drug addict, you took bloody freaking blood clot cocaine. There's nothing about you talking once or twice. You took cocaine, you took cocaine. Get that into your head, into your skull, into your cranium. You took cocaine, you took cocaine. Ugh, this is disgusting. Hi, it is I, son of the most high, it's a he's and welcome back to my channel. You may have noticed the different setup is because I shared a room with my little brother and this is his domain. So that's why I've actually used moved everything over here and I'm using soft block soft blocks? Soft blocks. Let's start this again. I yes ma'am! Oh, thank you. I'm using softbox lights. Um, my sister, she has a channel. Well, she'll be starting her channel soon. So she's giving me her lights to use for this video. I'm actually gonna buy a pair because it makes the lighting different. And I'm using my ring light over here as well, but it just makes me look more professional. I love it. Like it's very cinematic. It's giving me that, you know, that look. Also, I let you know, uh, the LA vlog will be out soon. I don't know when it's gonna be out, but I literally put my SD card inside the inside my Mac and honestly the footage is unending. Like it goes on forever. So I don't know when it's gonna be out. It will be out, I know it will be out one day, but I know it will be out. So just stay tuned. But I've got a few juicy videos to give to you guys. Um, I started uni again, you know, TV appearances here and there, you know, I've been done a bit of like ITV, BBC, there's, there's, there's a lot going on, I'm just trying to put food on the table and close on my back, so I'm just trying to do what I can, you know what I mean, at my young age of 19. But anyway guys, as you can see from the title of this video, it is very shocking, I know, the video is not clickbait, it literally was a mad experience, it literally happened like a week and a half, two weeks ago when I was in LA, and it was one of the most horrific traumatizing experiences of my entire life. I don't talk to the tramp ever again. I will not be talking to him ever again. I don't talk to him ever again. The dog is history and I will not be seeing him ever. So I haven't spoken to him since the day before yesterday. Like I literally made it official. I am done with you so don't talk to me but it is what it is. Um, this video will be me exposing him and his demonic evil satanic ways. So get ready for that. I just want this video to be a warning sign for people to not necessarily try and be peer pressured or feel like you should fit in in any sort of situation. So just sit back, relax, grab two milk chocolate digestives, a cuppa, and get ready because this is this is the juicy one. Before we get started, if this is the first time seeing my face or knowing of my existence, please give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe down below for more videos like this every single week. Like I said and I'll say again, YouTube are being dogs and they're not notifying their subscribers that their creators are making wonderful content every single week. So make sure you click that bell next to the subscribe button so you're notified when I post. Literally takes two seconds and we've been growing so so big recently. So I want to thank you so much, all of those who have been subscribing recently. So yeah, thank you so much. Anyway guys, without further ado, let's get on to this story time on how my friend, ex-friend, smuggled cocaine in front of me. So, as a lot of you guys know, many of you guys know, but if, if you don't know, I'm going to just say it again. I went to Los Angeles for two weeks um, recently and I came back on the 24th. I think it was either last Monday or the Monday before. Can't remember. I came back from LA and honestly, it was an experience. It really, really was. I came on my own. I didn't know anybody, but obviously I left making obviously amazing friends. Jocelyn, I love you girl. You will see her in the vlog. James, Shalom. Some amazing people that I genuinely would see as being amazing friends for life. And honestly, like, I just couldn't, I just, I, I just couldn't expect, like, dream of any better. The, dr the, the, um, the trip was amazing. I paid everything with my own money. I worked hard for two years. I saved up for this trip and I'll be going next year, hopefully, by the grace of God, depending on what happens. Because obviously you can't really predict the future. But whatever happens, hopefully I'll be there again. So basically, my initial plan was to go with my friends called Marcus, who's also on YouTube as well. But he had some complications with obviously traveling and obviously meeting somebody's house. Apparently there was some, there was some, there was something, there was something. There was something. There was something. There was something happening. I don't exactly know what it was, but there were some complications with obviously going to somebody's house to stay over at their house for a certain amount of time. Then obviously plans did not fall into place. So I was very depressed because I'm like, fam, I'm going all the way to LA all by myself. I don't know anyone there. It is very, very depressing because I spent almost £2,000 on a trip to go to a place and enjoy only to realise that I'm going to be on my own and not have anyone to talk to so I was really 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 upset I was like oh my gosh like I can't get a refund anymore I need to make this trip worthwhile there's so many things to do in LA and I didn't want to throw it away do you know what I mean so yeah it was, it was crazy it was crazy but prior to that actually one of my 
friends who I met when I used to work at Nando's together, this guy, I genuinely thought he was, you know, the OG. I genuinely thought that he was, you know, my ride or die, I guess you could say that. I genuinely thought this guy was, you know, he was a calm, lit person. I felt inspired by him, you know, he's 21, he drives, you know, he does credit card fraud. That's a different story for another date. You know, he, he's getting his coin, he's getting his coin. And I was like, wow, like I genuinely, I'm very impressed. This guy is making money moves and he's he's gone to LA like six, seven times. So, you know, he's been there. He knows what obviously LA is like. So I was like, oh my gosh, like this guy's actually going. So basically he actually went a day before me. Um, well, hold on, let's rewind quickly, plot twist. Basically before going to LA, we met up over like, you know, a meal and stuff like that. We've been talking about it. You know, we've been really, really hyped. Well, I've been hyped a lot. And I said, oh look, you know, I'm going to LA, it's going to be an amazing time, you're going to be there, I can't wait to have a good time. He goes, yeah man, sure, I want to take you here, I'm going to take you there, we're going to go here. We're going to go. I was like, oh my gosh guys, I, I, I literally cannot wait. Uh, we even planned a day, we're going to go to the Beverly Hotel, let's take some pics there, you know. Have a really, really good time, do you know what I mean? Because he's been there on countless times and it's my first time ever, ever coming to Los Angeles. I mean, I've been to the States before, I went to Florida in 2015, amazing experience, but this was a new, complete different experience for me. LA is like, it's not even a relaxing area. It's a busy, fast paced place. And when I went to church there once, everyone there, the vast majority are industry professionals. People are trying to make their coin and make their mark. So it's, it's nice and inspiring to see how it is in Hollywood and LA in general. I'm so freaking excited now. Like, although my plan with Marcus didn't work out, I know this is gonna work out and I'm so excited. Like, I'm so happy and like, I'm, I'm looking forward to this trip already. So he actually booked his tickets a few weeks before I was going and I went on the 10th of September and he went on the 9th so he got there a day before me but he went with his one of his um, associates I don't know what it is if that's his friend or enemy I have no clue what it is but from my own understanding if you don't like somebody and you've claimed that you literally cut connections off why are you still with them it doesn't make any sense like can anybody any any takers going once going twice so no once you claim that you're not talking to that person anymore cut connection off to me it doesn't make any sense but his friend or whatever they call each other friend enemy whatever uh told me that the initial plan was actually for him to go with one of his friends but because his friend wasn't available anymore he decided to go with this dog which is the one do, 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 do you get do you get one coming from? doesn't make any sense his page bearing in mind these two are 21 the guy especially who was my friend is 21 and you're acting like a child so i'm very surprised but anyway moving on now you know on the ninth when he arrived you know i'm seeing all these messages you know i'm seeing all the pictures of where he's at i'm like he's getting me so active and i'm like oh my gosh i can't believe it i'm going to la like the next day i'm so excited like he really was hyping me up like i genuinely was so excited like, i can't wait to meet you like i'm just so happy because i don't know anyone there like, you're the only person i know and it literally is about like 20 minutes away from me right now so i'm like oh wow like i can't believe it like i'm genuinely gonna have someone i can like spend the rest of my two weeks with so i realized that when i got there he was acting very 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 funny there was many times where i tried to contact him he will not answer me sometimes i'll message him let's say 9 a.m in the morning he'll get back to me eight o'clock the next day in the evening i'm like it's kind of really frustrating because like we're trying to meet up plan and do things and i don't want to obviously come across as like you know negative and like a party pooper because like you know i don't want anything to you know get in the way um but but on my way, I sent like an Instagram story of me going to obviously boarding the plane. I'll leave it on the screen here for you to see. I can't remember, but he was saying, I can't wait for you to get here. The guy who I'm with, he's a disgrace to humanity. He's a disgrace. He doesn't have to act. I don't even want you to meet him. If they're doing, if they're going to do anything, it's only going to be me and you. I was like, oh, rah, like, I mean, I was, I was kind of expecting this because if you guys have had bad history before and you're not going on holiday together, does it work? It really, really doesn't. So I was very, very confused. Also, guys, please let me know if you're, if, if you're getting the story so far. Like, I'm, I feel like I'm waffling, but trust me, it gets juicy. It, it gets very juicy. It's throat quenching. Yeah, he was telling me all this kind of stuff, and I was like, okay, right, is it that deep? Don't worry, just like, try to like, endure and just like, forget about it just try to like not worry about it he was like no i can't do it anymore this guy's really really stressing me out he's always paying the victim he's full of lies da, 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 da. i was like oh gosh i haven't even got to flip in i haven't even left the uk yet and i'm already hearing all these stories so i'm like do you know what fam just let it go do you know what i mean you're, you're you're grown men like you're not kids do you know what i mean like okay whatever just let it go so i arrived now and yeah like i said he was acting very funny he won't contact me on time he always message me late it was very very frustrating because i'm trying to make an effort to try and meet up 
up with you and we eventually met uh, like I think four or five days after I came which was really really annoying but because we did plan to meet up on the very early days when I arrived because obviously it's not like you have anything planned like he said he had no itinerary he didn't have anything planned so okay cool like let's do this um, fast forward now it just kept going on and on and on I tried to message this guy it was, it was a struggle it was a really 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 big struggle messaging him it's not like he has any kids to breastfeed like what are you what is it do you know what I mean so we eventually met once um, in the Hollywood Walk of Fame this is when obviously I appeared on the Jim Jimmy Kimmel show you can watch a little snippet over here and I'll leave the link in the description below you know I was the star of the show and obviously when I was there people were messaging me contacting me from all over seeing me on the street someone even know, uh, mistaking me for James Starr she thought I was, I was in the Sprite advert there was a lot of stuff going on like many people were like oh my gosh hey I saw Jimmy Kimmel how are you I was like celebrity in the making <laughs> in Los Angeles back all ready like I just came here chill out like let me breathe it, it was mad it was mad you know and then I realized that there was a lot of times where he just it, it literally felt like he didn't want to be up with me like I was just very very surprised and I was like okay you know what I'm not really liking this right now it's, it's I'm getting very lonely here and I'm just I'm not having it like I'm just really really not having it because obviously he's comfortable with his friend or whatever he calls him and like they're comfortable doing their own little thing there like that's cool like that's fine but I'm like why can't you bring me in like you've been here six seven times and I've told this guy time and time again when are you going to take a picture of me with the Beyonce star? When are we, when, because I really wanted to get a picture with like the Beyonce star on the Walk of Fame. I was like, when we go to these places, like, can you, do you know what I mean? Can you like show me around and things like that? It was such a struggle. It was such a struggle. It was one time on a Sunday, I was like, okay, look, I'm going to church now. When we finish, you and your friend, can you, I'm not going to mention their names because they're going to start being stupid. But anyway, can you and your friend meet me in Hollywood Boulevard? And he was like, oh, during the service he messaged me like several hours later perhaps per usual then he messaged me saying oh you know what to be honest with you me and so thought so forth are very lazy today um we're not really trying to do anything today we're really sorry however we're gonna go run up the mountain okay hold on so you're very lazy for you to go to hollywood boulevard which is literally like a five minute walk from your house but yet you have the energy and the courage and the destiny and the determination and the power and the might to go running up the Runyon Canyon which is like miles away so I'm just trying to see how it correlates because if you're lazy enough for you to not walk five minutes to a shop which is near your house but you're energetic enough and well enough to go running in canyon i was so confused it didn't make any sense it made no sense at all and i was like okay you know what i'm not gonna i'm not gonna question i'm not gonna argue you know what that's when i started doing my own little obviously networking met up with shalom met up with james and the moment he started seeing that i was meeting up with these people on my instagram and on my snapchat for some odd reason i was not relevant now oh oh i watch her videos no you don't 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 try it you try you try to use me to get through her and i hate fake idiots like that you don't even have to spell her name spell shalom he started with Q. He doesn't even know who she is. Doesn't even know who James is. Doesn't even know who Justin is. He literally just tried to use me. He tried to use me to get through to them. And honestly, I was like, fam. The thing is, the thing that irritates me is that he's not occupied. He doesn't do anything with his life. Like, he literally does not do anything. Like, allegedly, he's got some real estate agent job. And allegedly, he does something like that. But really and truly, he does nothing. Like, he genuinely says he wants to go back to school. Yeah, you should. Because you need to know what maturity is. Because you, fam, you, you, you are behind. You're slacking your counsel. Your Uber's outside. You, it, he's been waiting a few minutes. He might have to charge you five pounds for the wait. He had to wait because he, he's, he's waiting still. He's still waiting. But yeah, fast forward because this camera literally keeps saying card full every single second. I'm trying, I'm, trying, I'm, trying, I'm trying to whisk through this right now. So basically, where it actually happens, obviously, you understand how much of a dog he is now. So we're going to get back to We're going to get to the main point, like the main GBC part of the story. Moving on now. Um, this is the third time that I have had to take the SD card out of this camera, put it to my Mac, and format it. Hopefully it doesn't take hard fall again. As I was saying before I was really interrupted, we're now gonna fast forward now. So, after contacting this dog time and time again, we said we're gonna meet up for, for dinner to go to Panda Express. Because where he is, there's in and out, we're all in West Hollywood by actually, but where he is, he's so close to in and out Burger King, Wendy's, Chick-fil-A, all those obviously, you know, places. We're like, okay, we're going to go to um, Panda Express. So he said before he goes, he wants to go and buy drinks at the corner shop. So me and his friend waited outside and he went to go and buy his drinks. I'm not a drinker. I mean, I drink occasionally every once in a while, but I'm not, you know, it's not much of a big deal. You know, he calls himself a Muslim, but from my own understanding, I'm Muslim meant to drink. That's haram. Is it haram? 
Harami? Aram? Ceramics? I don't know. That's a different story for a different date. Get yourself together. But anyway, so he, um, you know, he went to buy his drinks and I was like, okay, cool, we're gonna wait. We'll just wait. So we were just having a conversation. Mainly we're having a conversation, just waiting. And basically, as we were on the street, he came out and as we were on our way to Panda now, we met these two people on the street. Now these two people, they're a couple, that is, is, is a, uh, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, or whatever they call themselves. One of them's a choreographer, one of them's an upcoming actor, trying to be an actor, trying to get there. So basically we're having a conversation on the street, I was like, okay, cool, da, 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 da. we met these people, they seem genuine, they seem cool. They were like, oh, do you know anywhere else we can go? Do you know any places in Hollywood we can go to have a good time? I'm like, I know about Wayho, but I'm not really a massive, person about that like, I don't really know like you can ask my friend the dog at the time um, you know because he might know the area because he's been here several times so he actually moved on from the conversation and it was just uh, talking about politics and this kind of stuff and I was like yeah okay it, it, it was cute the conversation was cute but I really was hungry and that's what I came out of my house for so they actually had drinks with them so basically my ex-friend's friend or if you call it took some of his drink so he was obviously a bit you know woozy and he was a bit drunk so the couple and this guy's friend was fairly drunk so the only people who were actually really sober at the end was me and my ex-friend so as we were going back to because obviously panda closed now i'm like okay well it's annoying now but anyway no worries it's fine we all went back to my ex-friend's um ex-friend's uh, place um and as we we're on our way the ex-friend and my and i we were walking towards the house and the rest were behind us there was a big distance between us so my ex-friend was like oh you know he's always doing this kind of stuff he's always an embarrassment i don't know why he's bringing these people to our house because he now told them that you can come over bearing in mind this guy's drunk so he has no clue what he's talking about so basically he was like can you see what he's doing now da, 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 da. this is what i was telling you this is what i was telling you and at first i'm like okay like i'm genuinely having a really in-depth conversation with this guy because i'm actually having i'm genuinely having a conversation with him but then again I realised I'm not a mug. The only reason why he was talking to me was because he had a little hissy fit with this friend of his. But now that he's having an argument or some little, you know, disagreement, I'm not relevant, for example, for some odd reason. But when they want to solve their issues, I'm not relevant. I've now become flipping Christmas leftovers on, tw on the 26th on Boxing Day. Like, he literally treated me like that. Like, I literally was the scraps. All the trimmings just left over there. I was like, oh, wow. So, obviously, I didn't bring it up. Because I'm sensible enough, I'm not dumb. So I'll just talk and I was like, listen, do you know what? Don't compromise. This is your place. It's Airbnb you're using. You don't know this lady who's your host. She can kick you out and you have nowhere to go. So you need to say, listen, you can't you can't come here. These are complete strangers. I don't know why the hell you've brought them into your area. So basically I was like, okay, do you know what? It's probably not that deep. Don't worry about it. Hopefully they won't cause much noise. We got to my ex-friend's place now. They were making so much noise. They were making a ridiculous amount of noise. They were fighting, they were arguing. Bearing in mind it is dark, it is pitch black in the night. So I'm just sitting there. I'm my own business, I'm just sitting there. I'm just doing my own thing, I'm just sitting there. And then I get really, really hungry because basically um, my ex-friend and his friend, they went up to the beach earlier on and they went to go and eat. And I was gonna wait for them to come back. So the whole point of us going was obviously for me to go meet up with them to go to Panda. Then after that, they were like, actually, do you know what it is? We actually weren't really that hungry. So why did you bring me out of my house? Why did you bring me out of my house? I could have stayed in my house and got myself a cheeky little takeaway from Domino's. Why the hell did you bring me out of my house? I was really, I, I was pissed, but I didn't say anything. I just left it. So they were just going off on one. They were arguing in the in, in the in the backyard. I went to sit inside because they were smoking, and I, I, I couldn't inhale the fumes. I just couldn't because I'm not a smoker. I couldn't inhale the fumes. So basically, I told this dog that it's my dog called even dog wolf wolf. I'm gonna go to IHOP because IHOP is actually like across. It's, it's not across the road, but is it she when you turn the sidewalk? Is it she around the corner? So that can you know what? I'm gonna get takeaway and I'm gonna sit back and eat my meal when i finish i'll come back to yours my initial plan was to get takeaway but because it was really really cold at the time at the at night um i didn't want to wait and then carry the takeaway and obviously it took it actually took long as well so i'm like i'm better off just eating the food there and then fast forward down went back to his place and i come back i come through the back entrance and i see all of them sitting around um in the garden and i see the girl who came with her boyfriend doing something i can i can hear some rattles i can hear some like you know plastics you know like paper bags or something like being rustled and she's like so i'm wondering what the hell's going on because like are you i know you're cold but you're shiv you're just going over the top if you're really shivering but i clocked she was actually sniffing cocaine i was like um what is that you have there she goes oh nothing just a bit of coke just a bit of coke 
just a bit of coke okay okay so I was like okay well I've never experienced this I've heard stories about people taking cocaine and dying and cutting themselves and whatnot but I've never ever experienced it seeing somebody take cocaine so I was like sitting there because the dog knows that obviously I don't, I'm, not, I'm not into drugs I don't do any of that kind of stuff he saw me he looked at my reaction and I was just I was there minding my own business I was like because it's very, it's very, very uncomfortable for me, you know? And then after that, let's say 10 minutes later, the dog then says to me, hey, he is, I think you might want to look away. I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean that you might, he might want me to look away? I'm like, no, it's all right. I'll, 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 there's nothing for me. Like, what is it? There's nothing for me. He goes, no, hey, he is, you might want to look away. I said, what is he? He goes, oh, I feel bad. And I said, feel bad about what? Little did I know when I was gone, they had a deal and the guy who we met on the street gave the dog some cocaine. And I sat there and I was like, in my head my, my spirit was like book your uber now and go home go home go home and i booked the uber i don't know what's going on but the devil was at work every single time i tried to book it every single time the uber would cancel and it would just get a new uber and it kept canceling and getting a new one kept canceling and i was like what's going on i can't understand the devil's at work here i can't be in this environment i can't do it i came to los angeles for a mental detox to to clear my depression and just have fun and then i'm witnessing this happening and i'm trying to i can't be in this environment i can't be in this environment and the lady asked me do you want cocaine i said no she goes you ever tried it i said no she goes come on i said no no i'm not i said no i'm not doing it i'm not doing it i said no actually she sunk in her chair because obviously she's never probably never experienced somebody like that with me i can never i can never be peer pressured me sniff that little god forbid you know Whitney Houston Matt Miller died what makes you think that you can't get caught up on it no thank you I'm not doing it I am not doing it fast forward now I'm cutting the long story short now the dog then goes oh um he's I think you might want to look away again okay so the first one wasn't an accident second time you know exactly what you were doing and he sniffed it right in front of me and I was like okay you know what it's time for me to go it's time for me to go and my uber just came in time I was like guys nice knowing you See you later, see you. Um, and as I was on my way leaving now, the dog came up to me and goes, oh, Ahiz, I really feel bad. I'm like, feel bad about what? What's it to feel bad about? Oh, I took cocaine. Okay, well, at the end of the day, no one forced you to do it. You bought it out of your own will. You sniffed it more than once. Oh, he says, do you feel differently about me? I said, I don't feel differently about you. I mean, if you want to end your life, that's literally completely up to you. But the fact that then he was like to me, oh, but you know I don't do this back home, I only do it once. Can you imagine the nonsense? You can do it once, twice, five times. It doesn't matter. You are an, you are a drug addict. You took bloody freaking blood clot cocaine. There's nothing about you took it once or twice. You took cocaine. You took cocaine. Get that into your head, into your skull, into your cranium. You took cocaine. You took cocaine. Ugh, this is disgusting. Boy, you took cocaine. And I was like, I was like, I was like, oh, wow. Like, I literally, my whole mood changed. The fact that he knew about my depression, he knew about um, how I felt, why I came to LA for like, you know, a new experience and the fact that you do that in front of me Nah, you're not a friend, you're not a friend Find the nearest emergency exit door, your Uber's outside Well, my Uber was outside, but you go know what I mean, your Uber's outside, get out By the look of his face, he was like he was, he was very embarrassed But really, truly, like, if you want to take a cane, that's actually your headache But I can't be around that kind of energy I can't be around that friendship if my friends are taking drugs that are life-threatening, me be a friend to you. See you later, I'll send you a postcard. And I've never seen him again. Thank God that our flights were at different times and we were going to different airports and we had different airlines because I do not want to be around him. I do not want to be around him. He was sending me messages upon messages telling me, oh, I find it how so rude how ever since you come up from LA, you haven't been answering your phone. Listen here, I'm a grown man, you're 21. I've got a career, you're doing fraud, you're not doing anything in your life, I'm genuinely trying to get clothes on my back and put food on my table, I'm doing something, you call me during my lecture, am I going to answer, am I going to stoop down to your level, no, I think the f*** not. So, he's history, I don't talk to his friend anyway, the only reason why I spoke to his friend on the trip was because he was there, other than that I won't chat to him, like, I have nothing to do with him, None, nothing at all, if I see him on the street, what's good, hello, like, post up, hey, he is a disgrace, he is a disgrace to humanity, just like he said about his friend. He's a disgrace. I don't even want to see him. I don't even want to see him. I don't have anything to do with him. And boy, okay? I'm not about it. Not about it. Not about it. Anyway, guys, that was it for this week's video. If you guys enjoyed it, please give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe down below. It's cute to know that this guy's probably watching it right now as well. And he's fuming because he knows the truth. He knows the blood clot truth. 
moral of the story don't ever necessarily feel you have to feel peer pressured or you feel you have to take something like that especially if you're going to go on a holiday basically he was never a friend because you don't do stuff like that do you know what i mean cocaine nah nah allow it allow it allow it no 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 i don't chat to him anymore he called me the other day did i answer no am i going to call him back no but yeah that is it he's history he's gone the chat has been closed never see him again so that's it for me this week and i'll see you guys very very soon <laughs> goodbye I'm fucking with your energy.